But, uh, but thanks for coming tonight. Um, I've been here for about three years, um, and uh, I'm going to kind of try to tell you a little bit of a story um, about what's going on in the world of technology and software as it sort of relates to the work that I do as a computer scientist. Um, prior to coming to Bennington, I spent a lot of time in the technology industry, um, and I will assert that boxed software is dead. Most people have not bought a piece of software that they've put on their computer by opening a box and taking something out of that box and sticking it into a computer for quite some time. Um, this is the last piece of box software that I worked on, SQL Server 2005, uh, which is almost 10 years old now. Um, because the reality is that basically um, services and apps are the new software. Um, this picture is of the team that I was on at Microsoft building what is now called Bing, um, the search engine that probably four people here have used. Uh, but, but soon everyone will. Um, and, and I'm not sure where I fit in the picture exactly. It's, it's been so long, but it's somewhere in the back right. Um, but, but basically the reality is that most of the stuff that we do today um, actually takes place not necessarily on a computer, but really in some, some third place, you could say. Um, I, I actually took a survey last year about, uh, about a month from now, so if you're in one of my classes, you may get uh, subjected to this again. Uh, a very small number of people in the survey, so it's more descriptive than anything else, uh, about basically how people use the internet and what people are doing. Um, and the reality is most of what people are doing on their computers uh, is the web, um, music, basically things that don't require programs anymore. It's stuff that you go pop open a web browser, grab your phone or your iPad or something like that, and those are things that you go and, and run. So basically this world of, of, of box software is kind of over and things have changed a bit. Um, just to break it out a little bit more, these are the most common applications, this is by minutes, uh, and this is just for one day and 18 people, and uh, there's a lot of Facebook there, um, uh, some good amount of Skype and things like that, which is actually one of the few things that I actually use a program you download and use. Um, but, but by and large, really the way we use computers, if we even use a computer at all, or what we consider a computer, has, has changed. Um, and you can see this, it's not important to look at the numbers or anything else like that, it's just a graph that has lines and stuff and one going down, and that's the important thing. Uh, which is basically the erosion of the PC industry, which is essentially the, the, the notion that, that people are buying not, this, this explosive growth in computers has slowed down. Um, you know, and that slowdown has occurred in parallel with, if you can read it, um, the release of the iPad. Um, so people are kind of taking a different road uh, to how they use computers, and that means for people like me that are computer scientists and the, the type of work that I do, um, things have changed a little bit. Um, so, so where did software go? Um, and the, the answer to that is, is, is this thing called the data center. Um, they are these beautiful things, and actually, thank God for the data center because I would have really boring slides without the pictures, that they, that they give, they're these beautiful secret places. Um, in this case, this is Facebook, um, so your cat pictures are located somewhere <laughs> in this slide. Um, you know, these, they're these wonderful secret places full of computers, um, and this is where a lot of your software lives. This is Microsoft uh, in Chicago. Um, this is Google. Um, you can see sort of the human relation to the, the large technological machine. Um, and uh, my work has re revolved around working in data centers, uh, in, in, both in the past and the present. Uh, this one is, is uh, Microsoft, where you actually can take shipping containers full of servers and stack them on top of each other um, and put them into a warehouse in some place. This is in Chicago. Um, and just plug it in, basically. Plug it into to power. The, the network and to water uh, to keep them cool, and off you go. There were actually supposed to be three levels of uh, these containers. They built the facility with the roof 12 inches too short, so we only got two. Um, I lived inside of one of these for three days as well with a French press and a two space heaters and a laptop and would not recommend it. <laughs> but, but anyway, these are fascinating places. They're secret places and they're places that a lot of people don't have access to um, out there these days. But, but there's a lot going on in there. Um, this is uh, most likely eBay. Um, one of the things that, that's going on is um, something that I worked on with some students, actually, from Bennington um, for the first fieldwork term that I was here for um, called the Cloud Card. 
which is basically a way of taking one of those data centers that I showed you and bringing it into a smaller uh, organization. And what this particular um, device does that we actually have a patent pending for the students and I and some of the people from Nebula is a way of basically making it so you can take all of those machines that are in the data center and make it easy to manage those. So you don't have to have a human going around and basically hooking up a keyboard and a monitor and a mouse to, to deal with those. Um, so this is kind of an interesting thing because this actually, this device here, and even actually the cable, uh, the purple thing there with the rectangular stuff at the end, actually has software that runs on it. Um, so this is sort of one of the things that's, that's happening right now is that this landscape of just sitting and writing programs to running a desktop has, has changed a little bit. Um, the title of this slide may not make much sense until I explain it, um, but I mean, so basically, I call these cheesy things. Um, and I didn't really have much to do with choosing the name for this, but um, what you're seeing in the middle here is um, something, called, uh, something called Cheesy Fingers um, that some collaborators of mine and I uh, did to design a component for Facebook um, that is used to wirelessly monitor and manage servers in their data center. Uh, in fact, on the left-hand side where the little red arrow is pointing to, that is this idea that we had, this thing that we came up in this hackathon at Facebook uh, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, um, it actually became reality. We actually manufactured these, um, and you can see one sitting happily nestled snugly into a Facebook server doing its magic. Um, on the right is another thing called Big Cheese, which is the thing that coordinates all of these uh, um, cheesy things, if you will. So, uh, but so this is some hardware that, that we worked on um, with some of my colleagues from um, uh, Nebula, which is a, a small startup in the Bay Area, uh, as well as Facebook. Um, and we actually won two hackathons at Facebook um, for this work, um, and it's actually been put in production, and we have have some patents on it. So. Um, these are the things that are being used to basically run data centers, um, and it's a different type of technology. There's software that I actually wrote that runs on all of these, um, and it's, it's just a very different world. Um, another project that I have going right now is a, is a really neat project, which is basically um, a sensor node, um, which you can use to build, uh, I, it had initially been designed for a course that I teach called Computing in the Developing World, which is looking at sort of technology for development type stuff. Um, and the idea is to build a uh, demonstration urban and rural wireless mesh network where basically you're connecting things that have no connectivity otherwise, right? A place that has no internet. How do you get things to connect to each other? How to communicate with each other? Um, that's the notion of a mesh network. Um, and really what this is, what's going on with this is we're actually expanding this into some bigger ideas such as this notion of um, the internet of things. This notion that we have lots of computers everywhere that we don't even realize exist. Um, you'll, you may have something, or actually up to 70 things uh, at this point in a new car uh, that wirelessly communicate with each other, including the car manufacturer, your auto dealer, your insurance company, other places like that, that tell you about not just how the car is working, but what's traffic like, you know, how fast you drive, things like that. Health devices, monitoring devices, things like that. Um, really, in essence, we're expecting to see something like 6.5 billion objects um, connected to the internet in the near future, um, which is really very different to you know like to having something like this, I you know, uh, MacBook here or whatever uh, to to use a web browser. Really, in reality, you've got things like the Nest, um, if you've heard of it, which is a smart thermostat. Um, you've got the Fitbit, which people put on their their um, wrist to keep track of how many footsteps they're taking things like that, um, pet trackers, you know, really basically all, all sorts of different devices that, that become internet connected and that talk to each other, um, you know, to, to basically, um, you know, make this whole world of, of devices where there's no humans involved. Um, so basically what, the, what sort of is going on here is that software is definitely still alive and well. Um, and really um, the internet of things is sort of, um, where things are happening now. It just looks different than it did before. Um, so along those lines, one thing that I thought would be interesting to mention is that uh, Robert Rancic, our digital arts faculty member, and I have um, started a program called Future Studio here at Bennington. Um, and right now it's in the form of a two-term course uh, that we're structuring sort of like a small startup company at Bennington 
Um, and the idea is that we're going to do this sort of cooperative model where we're looking to come up with an idea and uh, prototype an Internet of Things based uh, product, um, again, as a start. Um, it's a cross-discipline effort. It's sort of this creative studio space uh, where we'll work together um, across the disciplines, artists, computer scientists, designers, uh, you name it, uh, to prototype and, and build a, a product that we'll then take to market. Um, so the goal is to actually have something that we can market here from Bennington by um, the spring of, of 2015. Um, you can actually get a little bit more information on Future Studio as well if you're curious about it at www.futurestudio.net. Um, but these are just a few of the things um, that I've worked on and that, um, that are going on at Bennington. There's a lot of really neat classes in computer science coming up. I'll just plug all of those right now. Um, and, and a lot of interesting things. So if you're curious, definitely feel free to come, come by and talk to me uh, because basically I like to bring my work into the classroom uh, and really interested to hear about your ideas. So these are some of my collaborators that I've worked with, some of the, the people that have funded some of this work, uh, as well as some of the students um, and the great things that they're doing today. So um, thank you. Welcome to Bennington. And, uh,